In the news, we'll hear about several FDA decisions and we'll kick off the American Society of Clinical Oncology's Genital Urinary Cancers Symposium. These stories and more this week on OncLive News Network. Hello and welcome, I'm Laura Jones. First, the FDA has approved panobinostat in combination with bortezomib and dexamethasone for patients with multiple myeloma who received prior treatment with bortezomib plus an immunomodulatory agent. The approval was based on a pre-specified subgroup analysis from the Panorama 1 trial. In this analysis, panobinostat combination resulted in longer progression-free survival and greater tumor shrinkage. The FDA has required a boxed warning regarding severe diarrhea and severe and fatal cardiac events, arrhythmias, and electrocardiogram changes. As a result of these side effects, the drug must be administered along with a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy. More good news from the FDA, rindopepimet received a breakthrough therapy designation from the FDA for the treatment of adult patients with glioblastoma multiform that test positive for the epidermal growth factor receptor variant 3. The designation was based on data from several clinical trials including the Phase 2 REACT study and the Phase 2 ACT-3 study. Dr. David Reardon from the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute discusses the interim findings from the REACT study. Uh, we saw very encouraging data with this, um, in this study, somewhat surprisingly encouraging data actually. First of all, the vaccine was well tolerated, that we expected. Lots of good data supporting it's, it's a safe, well tolerated vaccine for, for GBM patients. Um, we saw a surprising degree of immunoreactivity measured by antibody responses against the EGFR V3 mutant protein. Uh, over 70% of the patients, despite the fact that they were recurrent glioblastoma patients and pretty heavily pretreated, uh, demonstrated quite robust humoral immune responses against EGFR V3. Uh, in terms of efficacy, uh, we did see radiographic responses that seemed to favor the vaccine arm of the study, uh, but most importantly were benefits associated with the primary endpoint of progression-free survival, which at the interim analysis has reached statistical significance. So the uh, rindopepamint receiving patients having a, a over two-fold improvement in PFS6 rate compared to the bevacizumab plus control, uh, plus placebo. Uh, but most importantly, for an efficacy point of view, was the survival endpoint. And here we saw a significant in increase in overall, median overall survival associated with the rendipepamine vaccine. Uh, and uh, interestingly, the uh, tail ends of the curve, the patients who are out doing well, seem to have a very durable benefit associated with the vaccine as well. In Glioblastoma multiform is the most aggressive type of brain cancer with a five-year survival rate of 5%. Therefore, this FDA decision brings new hope to this group of patients. Finally, in FDA news, a priority review has been granted to the MEK inhibitor cobimetinib for the use in combination with the BRAF inhibitor vimurafenib to treat patients with BRAF V600 positive advanced melanoma. The priority review decision was based on data from the phase three COBRIM study in which combination therapy reduced the risk of disease progression by 49% versus vimurafenib alone. Median progression-free survival was improved by 3.7 months with the addition of cobimetinib. A final FDA decision should be made by mid-August 2015. This week in Orlando, the American Society of Clinical Oncology is holding its annual Genotourinary Cancers Symposium. Next week, we will share more news on the key data coming out of the meeting, but we would like to share one study that was part of the press cast held in advance of the symposium. Active surveillance is recognized globally as standard care for low-risk and some intermediate-risk patients with prostate cancer. However, a retrospective study found a four-fold increased mortality risk in men with intermediate-risk prostate cancer being followed under active surveillance versus those with low-risk prostate cancer. 
study co-author Dr. Andrew Loblaw, a radiation oncologist at Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center in Canada, stated that these data confirm that for patients with low-risk prostate cancer, active surveillance remains a very safe, reasonable, and appropriate approach that aligns with guideline recommendations. He believes more research must be done to better identify which intermediate risk patients can be safely watched under active surveillance. Finally, as a compliment to the Genital Urinary Cancer Symposium, we would like to highlight the OncLive Peer Exchange, Biomarker Tests and Emerging Therapies in Prostate Cancer. In this peer exchange, an expert panel engages in discussions about the use of key biomarker tests and the burgeoning therapeutic options for patients with urologic cancers. The doctors provide insights and practical examples of testing and therapy integration. To view the engaging exchange, please visit the website listed on your screen. And that will do it for this week on OncLive News Network. I'm Laura Jones. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.